Okay, in this video, I am going to show you how to build a model in Python for a mass on a spring and not in one dimension, not in two dimensions. I'm holding up my hands here too, you can't even see it, but in three dimensions. It's going to be awesome. Okay, we got a lot of stuff to do, so let's get started. So, first, let's start with the momentum principle. This says that the net force on an object is equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in time, where momentum is mass times velocity. If I consider a time interval delta t, and I consider the momentum p1 at the beginning of that time interval, and p2 is at the end of that time interval, then I can write the change in momentum as p2 minus p1. And those are all vectors. Okay, don't forget about the vector stuff. Now, if I multiply both sides by delta t, I get p2 minus p1 equals f net delta t, and then I add p1 to both sides of the equation, and I get this, p2. Equals, so the momentum at the end of the time interval is momentum at the beginning of the time interval plus f net delta t. We call, oh, that messed up. We call this the momentum update formula. And I just blanked it out. That's fine. You'll get it. Okay. So now we have another important thing. We need to consider position and velocity so that we define average velocity as the change in position divided by the change in time. Or R, we use R for the position because it's in three dimensions. So again, I can write this as R1 is the position at the beginning of the time interval. R2 is the position at the end of the time interval. So uh, the average velocity is a change in position over change in time. I can do the exact same trick. I can multiply by delta t, add R1 to both sides, and I get R2 equals R1 plus F plus B, V average delta t, and this one did work. That is the position update formula. Actually, that didn't work. Okay, that's fine. You can see it. Okay. So that's average velocity. Now, if delta t is small, and what does small mean? You don't know. Nobody knows, okay? But if it works, it works. If delta t is small, then v2, the velocity at the end of the time interval, is approximately equal to the velocity at the beginning of the time interval. I know that seems silly, but it's true. And if that's true, then I can write the position update formula as r2 is approximately equal to the initial position plus the velocity I just calculated, v2, at the end of the time interval times delta t. Now, you can do this both ways. Okay, you could calculate the average velocity or you could choose the velocity at the end. But if delta t is really small, it doesn't make that big of a difference. And so this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to use v2. I know you think it's crazy, and I, I get it. It seems crazy, but if it works, it works. Okay, now we need to know about the force due to the spring. So here I have a spring, and I drew that myself. And it has some length L0. It's unstretched. Now if I take that spring and I pull it so it's stretched, it's actually, now it's the length L, and I'm going to actually call the vector L from the beginning of the spring to the end of the spring is the vector L. And that's going to exert a force uh, depending on how much you stretch it. And I actually calculated this with a real spring, so it's there. Uh, and that's a video I'll link down below unless I forget, and then I won't. So I can calculate the amount the spring stretched. I can call that S. It's going to be the magnitude of the vector L. And why why am I calling it a vector if it doesn't if I'm just going to take the magnitude? You're going to see, trust me. The magnitude of the vector L minus the unstretched length L0. That's going to be the amount it stretched. Now, how can I get that as a force? Well, the force due to a spring is proportional to the stretch. So if I say it's going to be in the opposite direction of the stretch. So I'm going to say the spring force is to the left. It's going to be negative k, where k is the spring constant. And then I have that L minus L naught. That's my stretch. But now I have to have this as a vector. I'm going to need it as a vector. So if I take the unit vector L hat in the direction of L, then that will turn this whole thing back into a vector. Okay. So this formula works for the force due to the spring. I, I should give you a review about calculating unit vectors, but I didn't. So now imagine that I have this mass connected to a spring off at some angle. Then there are two forces on it, and I need to calculate the net force. So I have the downward gravitational force, which is m times g, the gravitational field. And then I have this spring force pushing or pulling in the direction of the spring. And so I could calculate that. Uh, and there's my vector l. So that's what I, I need to do that. So here's my plan. I'm going to start with initial conditions. So I need to start my calculation by saying, what's my initial position? What's my initial momentum? What's my time? What's my mass? What's my spring constant? What's g? All that stuff. 
then I'm going to use the position update, the position that I start with to find the net force and the mass. I'm not going to use position update. I'm going to say, okay, where am I at? Then I can use that to calculate the force. I, the gravitational force is always the same, but the spring force depends on the position because that changes L. With the net force, I can use that momentum update formula. So I'm breaking this into small time steps. So I know the momentum and I know the force. Now I can find the new momentum at the end of that little time step. Then I can use the momentum I just calculated to find the position at the end of the time step. And that's it. Just repeat this all over. Now I'm going to show you how to do this in with code. Okay, so we need to have, I need to show you some things about coding and we want to make a visual model, a, mod, a visual model. So I'm going to use GlowScript 3.0 vPython and in this we can make visual objects. So if I just type this, all of this code, right, that you see right there, ball equals sphere, sphere is a built-in function in, in GlowScript. I'm going to call it GlowScript, but it's vPython, it's all the same thing. So this function can allow certain parameters to be passed to it and it will make a ball, a sphere. It makes a sphere. So if I type that code, I can give it things like, and this isn't everything you could say, I could say the position. The position is the location of the center of the sphere. I can give the radius, which is surprisingly the radius of the sphere. I can give it a color, okay? So I can do all that. And then even, even better, I can reference, once I make that, ball and I give it a position. I can actually use the position of that. So this position of the ball, ball.pos, is the position of the ball. I could print it out. I didn't show you what it looks like. But that's my position value. Ball.pos is R, right? Because if I want to move this ball around, wherever the ball is, the vector position is R. So I'm going to use ball.pos for the for R. I can give it other attributes. I could say ball.m is the mass, and I, I just picked that. I'm going to change it. And then I can change the mass or whatever. I can make ball.p the momentum. And instead of just calling it p, I can associate that with the ball. And that's going to make it easier if I have multiple objects uh, for later. So it's a good practice to do that. I'm going to really encourage you to use that, and I'm going to use it. Uh, there's something else I'm going to show you. I can add this. This is the same code, except I said make trail equals true. That's going to add a a trail to the ball. So whenever it moves, it's going to leave a little trail, and that's kind of cool. Oops, sorry. Okay, another object we're going to deal with is a cylinder. So I just called it the same thing. You could call it whatever you want. That ball, that's just a name. I can name it whatever I want. So I'm going to call the cylinder. There's a cylinder function in Python, and I, I give it a position. I give it an axis. I give it a radius, and I give it a color. So this is the actual output from uh, V Python, GlowScript, and I get a cylinder. And so what just to help you understand what's going on here, that circle, that's the location of the position. The position is one end of the cylinder. And then axis is a vector from that position to the other end of the cylinder, and then the radius of the radius. Okay, so I think we have enough. I'm gonna switch over to, to GlowScript. We're gonna write this from scratch. And it's gonna be super awesome. I'll just switch programs. Okay, so here we are. I've already put in a couple things. I started to get a little head start on it. I apologize for that. Uh, so let's just get right into it. The first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do, I want to make, um, I want to have the spring connected to some top point. Okay, so there's some anchor point that I want. I'm going to call that top, and it's going to be a sphere. Its position is going to be not at the origin. I'm actually going to put it somewhere else just for fun, just so you can see that it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to say, um, let's say, uh, zero, uh, the thing's seven centimeters, so let's say 0 0.03 in the y and zero. And I want to make this pretty tiny, so it's going to have a ra radius of 0 0.001. And I'm going to leave it as, as gray. Okay, so let's run that and see what it looks like. There's my, there it is. Okay. Now I'm going to make my mass, that's called a ball, a sphere. Um, I'm going to start it off. Let me, let me do this. Let's start this off at some angle. So I'm going to say theta equals 30 degrees. So 30 times pi divided by 180. I need to convert that to radians. And I'm going to uh, find the location of this with respect to that top point. So I want to put it down and to the right a little bit. So I'm going to say uh, the position is going to be equal to L0 
I'm going to have an unstretched length spring to begin with. L0 times uh, vector. Actually, I'm going to put it directly below it. Okay, so I'm going to put this at 0. But I'm going to still put it in here. Uh, so if I'm, if I'm thinking about it, I should have drawn a picture of this. The x coordinate is going to be, if I have the angle with respect to the uh, vertical, this is going to be sine theta. And then the y component is going to be negative cosine theta. But that's wrong. I actually made a mistake. So this is actually, the position is going to be this uh, final. It's going to be this plus, yeah, plus the top. So it's going to be actually top dot pos plus that. Yeah. Okay. Now the radius, and I think there that could be wrong. So I'm going to run this, but so let's give it a radius of let's say seven centimeters. Let's say one centimeter, zero point zero one. Oops, I put the equal sign there. And that, let's make it color yellow. And I'm going to give it a trail. Make trail equals true. Now let's run it and see where that ended up. Okay, that's down there. It's a little big. Let's make it half as big. Zero five. Okay, that's cool. Okay, happy. Now I need to make the spring. So let's say spring equals cylinder. And it's going to be starting at the top. So the position equals top dot POS. Remember that top dot POS is just a vector. So if I say the position of the cylinder is top dot POS, I'm, I'm setting it equal to a vector. And then the radius, I'm going to make it the same length, the same as the um, 0, 0, 1 as the top. And I, I don't, I'm not even going to give it color. So let's run it. And something bad happened. What the heck? Top cylinder position equals top dot POS. Right there. Radius is 0 0.01. What if I just comment this out? That's weird. That's working. Cylinder, I'm going to spell something spring equals cylinder. Position equals. Oh, I didn't give it an axis. That's why. Axis equals. Uh, it's going to be the final position. It's going to be the ball. Ball dot POS minus the initial position top dot POS. That's why it didn't work. There you go. Look at that. I can rotate around and everything. So I have my 3D model. I'm ready to start doing stuff. Now I need to give it. Uh, I need to give the ball a mass. Ball dot M equals. I've been using 50 grams, so 0 0.05. Uh, I need to give it an initial momentum. So I'm going to say ball dot p equals ball dot m times vector 0, 0, 0. I'm going to start it from rest. Um, I think I'm ready to go. So let's say t equals 0, dt equals 0 0.01, and then I'm going to say while t less than 4. Okay, so now I'm going to do my loop. My loop is going to run the loop until I get to t equals 4. So that kind of tells me how, how many times I'm going to do it. The very first thing I need to put in here is something that you wouldn't think, and that's rate. Rate tells vPython, if I'm making visual objects, instead of doing it as fast as I possibly can, this is going to do it 100 times every second. Okay. So if I have a time step of 0 0.01, then a, a, d, a rate of 100 will make it run in real time. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to calculate the vector L. Okay, because I need that, right? That's the length of the spring, which is not the same thing as the position of the mass, because uh, the top is not at the origin. So I'm going to say L equals the vector of the ball position, ball dot POS minus top dot POS, right? Because if I think about that vector going from the top position to the ball, it's final minus initial. So that's my L vector. Now I can calculate my spring force, Fs. I'm just going to type in the equation. Equals negative k times the magnitude of L. Remember, mag and norm are built-in functions in Python, right? B Python. So mag gives me the magnitude of that function. Mag minus L0 times norm, which is the unit vector L. Now I can calculate Fnet. It's going to be equal to Fs 
plus m times, oh, no, 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 plus ball dot m times g. And so g I already have as a vector, right? So this gives me a vector. Next thing I can do is update the momentum of the ball. Ball dot p equals ball dot p plus f net times dt, just like I said before, because I'm doing exactly what I said. Now I can update the position. Ball dot pos, right? Not r. I'm using ball dot pos. That's the position of the this mass is ball dot pos plus ball dot p times dt divided by ball dot m. Okay, so up here I should I should remind you that this equal sign is a make equal to that. So this is actually ball one, ball one dot p, ball dot p one, and this is ball two. So this is actually an update because it's taking this value adding f net delta t and setting that to the new value. So I don't have to have a billion variables. I can just use the same one over and over again. And the same thing here. This is updating the position of the ball. I can now update time. t equals t plus dt. And I think I'm done. I think it should work. But, you know, I may have made an error. Let's just, let's just see. No, I did not make an error. I'm not sure. It did, it did fall down pretty far. But it looks like it's working. Okay. Um, let's do this. It's just, it's just stretching a lot. That's, that's what it's doing. Um, let me just change the mass to, oh, it said, I don't know what that mass is there for. Uh, let's change this mass to 50. Let's just change it to 10. Let's see if that looks a little bit better. Yeah, I'm cool. There, that's good. Look at that. Now let's just check because we know that it should be a cosine function for this plot. So I'm going to make a graph, t graph equals graph. The x title is going to be time in seconds. And this is just to make a nice axis. The y title is going to be uh, y, let's call it y in meters, meters. And then I'll make the graph f1 equals g curve. Color equals color dot blue. I don't know why I do that. I always put it blue. And then down here, I can I can make that graph. Add a point to that graph. It's going to be f1 dot plot. I need to add the time. And then the y position of the ball, which would be ball dot pos. That's the vector position. And I can say dot y. So let's just see what this looks like. Everything looks great. Okay, I said I said I was going to make a three dimensional ball, right? So let's do that. So all I have to do over here is change my angle to 30 degrees. Now that my position is not going to be right below it, let's just see what happens. Oh, I know what I did wrong. <laughs> it did work. It worked. Okay, but notice that the spring stays in place. I need to update the spring. So down here, after I update the position of the ball, I'm going to say spring.axis equals... Uh, equals ball, ball dot pos minus top dot pos. Because the ball's position changed, the axis changed. Now let's run it. Check that out. Look at that. It's in two dimensions, right? But it's swinging back and forth. That is super awesome. And the y position is kind of cool too. But wait, I said three dimension. Okay, so to give it three dimensions, I want it to move in the z direction too. So let's just get this at 0.3. Let's see what happens. I'm just picking a value. So now the ball is going to start like this, but moving out of the plane of the screen, and I'm going to run it. Check that out. Is that not cool? And, and I want to point out that, I mean, this is a super complicated motion. Super complicated. This is not a super complicated program. Okay. We all we are doing is calculating the vector forces on this object, using that to update the momentum, using that momentum to update the position, and then repeating it forever, okay, or for four seconds, whichever comes first. And there you go. 3D motion of a ball on a spring, just like I said I would. Now you can. I'm going to include this link down below. You can change the initial conditions. You'll get all sorts of weird stuff. And it's super awesome and fun to play with. And you should play with it, right? You're not going to just understand this by just looking at me doing it. You have to do it too. Okay, so I am look forward to having you play with this. And I'll talk to you guys later.